Hey there, this is the One Boom, and you might have been wondering where my videos have been over the last week. Well, my tonsils decided to give up and die. Yeah, it's been kind of miserable, but on the bright side, I haven't been going on Twitter over the last week, so you could kind of argue that my health has improved. But you see, when I started getting sick, I really wanted to make a video about Call of Duty Vanguard having 10 attachments. Now, I want to do videos on Red Dead Redemption and on Battlefield 2042, more specifically, why I'm not interested in Battlefield 2042 very much. That is to say, I'm not hyped for it. Either way, I want to make those videos, but those sound like they require a lot of time. So I'm going to use this window of my throat not absolutely killing me to make a short little video on a simple topic. Call of Duty Vanguard has been leaked and shown to have 10 attachment options in Gunsmith, and a lot of the leaks say that that is by default because there's no wild cards in the game and from what we've seen, there's no perks that grant you extra attachments, at least none that I've seen. This video should be pretty easy to record because I can't even edit in pictures and videos of the things that have been leaked because otherwise, well, I just got done being bedridden, so I don't want Activision to make me bedridden again. So, Exclusive Ace already nailed it in his video where he said that 10 attachments on a gun is potentially scary for weapon balance, but the big downside is that it takes away the need for trade-offs. Now, I don't like limiting weapon customization that makes me feel like I need to pick the same three to four attachments on every gun like I did in COD World War II, and I didn't like how pick 10 systems made customizing your gun feel like a chore, like a frag grenade and a red dot sight cost the same in Black Ops 2, so yeah, unless you're an idiot, you're, you're gonna go with the frag grenade, because that's far more useful than a red dot. Also, a suppressor and an ACOG scope cost the same, so getting goofy with attachments doesn't really matter when the practical attachment costs the same as an attachment you probably don't need to put on your Type 25. Either way, I like being able to customize my guns in deep and meaningful ways. Modern Warfare nailed this. It felt meaningful because you weren't just changing stats, you were changing the overall aesthetic and feel of your gun. So there you go. One of the other aspects that made it feel more meaningful is that you were limited. You could only have five attachments on your gun. So whatever you put on had to count. Whether you want to make your gun incredibly cursed or incredibly competitive, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to think through what you're willing to sacrifice when you're customizing a weapon in Modern Warfare. And Black Ops Cold War, even though it had way less interesting attachments, made you take up your wildcard slot in order to have three more for a total of eight. It's under limitations that creativity truly strives in a case like this, and if I can just customize every aspect of my gun for free on every class, then I'm not really customizing my weapons, I'm building them. Now, there's some value in that, but if I just am always picking a barrel, magazine, foregrip, rear grip, stock, optic, perk, then it's not a choice on how I can modify a weapon to be more unique, it's just that every one of my weapons has to be crafted attachment by attachment 10 times. I'm not saying it's gonna be tedious to, you know, add those attachments, I'm just saying how, how do you balance that? Because then there's just hundreds and hundreds of variants of the STG, for instance. So you can have the STG in Call of Duty Vanguard, and, and that's all fine and good, but how do you balance somebody customizing 10 aspects of it, that's 10 weapon modifiers per gun, that's double Modern Warfare, so how do you balance that? Modern Warfare, Cold War, every Call of Duty game has had trouble balancing the combinations of certain guns with certain perks and certain attachments. Like the M16 wouldn't be overpowered in Call of Duty 4 except for that little stopping power perk. Certain weapons throughout COD history would have been balanced if it wasn't for stuff like Rapid Fire or High Caliber. We've also seen leaks showing that you can just equip fire and explosive rounds to your assault rifle just willy-nilly, and if that's actually the case, well, it's a good thing I know how to uninstall Xbox games. There's a button with three lines on it. Go ahead and press that. This menu will pop up. If you go to uninstall, you can delete the game. Whoa, man, slow down. All I have is a DS stylus here. If you're a Call of Duty player, I don't need to go in-depth on this topic for you guys. You guys know how attachments have affected the balance of Call of Duty ever since you were able to put attachments on your guns in Call of Duty. And nobody needs to be told that explosive FMJ rounds and incendiary rounds have no place on SMGs and ARs. That doesn't make any sense. But there's one last thing to add here. I don't trust any Call of Duty developer with this undertaking, but I really don't trust Sledgehammer. 
Sledgehammer doesn't exactly have the most consistency under their belt, but the one thing that I noticed consistently throughout Call of Duty World War II and Advanced Warfare is their inability to properly balance weapons. I remember weapons bouncing between being overpowered and completely useless. I remember weapons staying overpowered throughout the entire life cycle and somehow never being properly tweaked or touched. And that kind of happens with every single Call of Duty game, but I think it really happens with Sledgehammer's games. And I don't trust them to tweak 10 attachments per gun. Like maybe some guns will have less attachment options than others and other guns will just have smaller attachment pools to pick from, but it still doesn't make any sense to me to push the game in this direction. From my point of view, what it looks like is they saw how popular Gunsmith was in Modern Warfare and shoehorned it into Black Ops Cold War because you can't have a Call of Duty anymore without Gunsmith, even Call of Duty Mobile got Gunsmith. And now you're going into a World War II game which will be more inherently limiting for the developers when it comes to adding new content due to its time period, so the best thing you can do is improve Gunsmith. How do you improve it? I'm glad you asked. You do the tried and true game developer method of overcorrecting in the wrong direction. Just add more. More is better, and the best thing you can do to capitalize on the success of Gunsmith is to create Gunsmith, but with zero balance. I mean, people loved coming up with competitive, quirky, casual, and cursed weapon builds in Modern Warfare, so people will love it here, even if it doesn't have any of the weapon balance, because you'd have to forget the fact that Modern Warfare's main selling point with Gunsmith for any longtime player of Modern Warfare wasn't that they could make their gun crazy good or crazy cursed, it was that despite being able to do so, it didn't destroy weapon balance. Obviously, some combinations were better and worse than others, but that's okay, we, that's just sort of unavoidable. With Vanguard, we're talking about doubling the variability, we're talking about doubling the modifications. Black Ops Cold War has a problem where it doesn't really definitively have a time to kill because so many of the different weapon categories are out of balance from the other ones. Some are clearly designed around 150 health, others seem like they're designed for a 100 health game. But imagine a game where everybody's modifying their assault rifles and SMGs and LMGs 10 times. And when you factor in that a single gunsmith attachment in either Black Ops Cold War or Modern Warfare can change a gun three ways, you know, recoil control, aim down sight, speed, movement, speed, bullet velocity, all of those could be changed by a single attachment. So yeah, just take that and do it 10 times. The gun doesn't exist anymore. It's a amalgamation of whatever you end up slapping on it. And now you have to ask yourself, what percentage of the patch notes and future Call of Duty Vanguard updates are just going to be sledgehammer tweaking attachments constantly because people are finding more and more overpowered attachment combinations? And then also how many of these attachments are just going to be duds because there's no way they're making every attachment for these guns optimal. Cold War didn't do that. Modern Warfare didn't do that. So unless sledgehammer has been exclusively hiring magicians, to work on the weapon balance of Vanguard, the only thing they're going to be pulling out of their hat is garbage. And with that, I'm going to end this commentary. If I sounded bad in this video, it's because, well, my tonsils are horrible. If you want to send them a formal complaint, I'll leave their address in the description of the video. And uh, yeah, see you when I see you guys. Goodbye. If I got anything wrong, by the way, I don't care. <laughs>